What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 33rd jailbreak update video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak, of course. We're also gonna be talking about the extra recipe jailbreak for the iPhone 7, one of the all time best jailbreak teams possibly returning soon and more. So first of all, iOS 10.3.1 is still being signed right now as of today, which is Wednesday, May 31st at 3 p.m. Eastern at the time of recording this. So if you have not saved your SHSH2 blobs for 10.3.1 yet, or if you have not updated the 10.3.1, 3.1 yet, make sure you do so as soon as possible. Apple could kill 10.3.1 as early as later on today, but I'm expecting it to stop getting signed later on this week and maybe Monday at the latest. So yeah, make sure you save your blobs and also make sure that your blobs are valid. I will have a link down below in the description to make sure that your blobs that you've saved are actually valid and that you're gonna be able to use them in the future uh, to downgrade or update to 10.3.1. So now let's talk about one of the best jailbreak teams of all time possibly returning. And that jailbreak team is the Chronic Dev Team. These are the guys behind the Green Poison Jailbreak and various other tools. And the Chronic Dev Team consisted of Chronic, Pod2G, Poisix Ninja, and more. They were also affiliated with big names such as Muscle Nerd, Geohot, Comex, Planet Being, and much more. So yeah, I mean, it's basically just all of the biggest names in the jailbreak scene were associated or in the Chronic Dev Team. Now, we don't really know how many of those members are actually still active in the community, so we're just going to kind of have to wait on that. But Chronic did say this on Twitter when asked about release jailbreaks to the public he said quote in the future not yet now chronic also said this back in 2016 with a little bit more context saying that once his company is bringing in good revenue the team will have more time to research jailbreaking and you can see that he is definitely talking about releasing public jailbreak tools not just researching jailbreaking he's actually talking about releasing tools like green poison so this is obviously amazing news you know he did say it again in 2016 but the fact that he still said it you know into the future in 2017 the fact that he's still thinking about it and still planning on coming back to the jailbreak scene is awesome. You know, it's great to have some big names like Chronic and them back. Hopefully, Pod 2G, Poise X Ninja, all of them are going to be there as well. But again, we just don't know how far in the future he's actually talking about. It could be two years, three years, a month. We don't know at this point. Chronic also did mention on Twitter that he's actually working on a 10.3.1 jailbreak just for fun on his own. So that's pretty interesting as well. So again, to those of you who still think jailbreaking is dying or it's not going to be a thing in a couple years, this should prove otherwise. And the reason I say that is because Chronic has been there done that he's developed jailbreaks he's released jailbreaks he knows the support side of things he knows what this entails so i doubt he'd be saying he's going to make a comeback to the jailbreak scene if he didn't know what it entails and if jailbreaking was really dead i don't think he'd even consider coming back especially since he has a company now now speaking of the members of the chronic dev team i hope that muscle nerd can come back only the real ogs will remember muscle nerd that dude was a legend so it'd be amazing to see him come back but as for geohot i doubt that he's going to be coming back he's moved on to much bigger and better things like hacking teslas and smart cars and things like that so i doubt he's ever going to come back to the jailbreak community unfortunately so yeah great news we just really don't know when into the future the chronic dev team is going to be coming back so now let's talk about the extra recipe plus yalu iphone 7 jailbreak so if you've been out of the loop for the past week or so extra recipe is an iphone 7 jailbreak for ios 10 through 10.1.1 by zarub which actually uses ian beer's kernel exploit and luca tedesco's memory protection bypass so zarub posted this jailbreak publicly on his github page as an xcode project and luca tedesco took that combined it with his Yalu jailbreak and combine it to make extra recipe plus Yalu and actually put it as an IPA on his website, which of course is where we downloaded it from. If you watch my videos in the past week, uh, I made two videos, I believe on this, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're now on beta four for extra recipe and beta four actually includes a new UI. So it's actually going to have a UI instead of just crashing and respringing your device. You're now going to have a go button in there by default. You're also going to have substrate enabled and backboard and things like that. And also beta four adds support for iOS 10.0.x. So for those of you who are lucky enough to still be on 10.0.x on an iPhone 7, which I'm assuming is very rare because, you know, you guys were kind of left in the dark all along with these jailbreaks. But if you were patient enough somehow to still be on 10.0.x on an iPhone 7, you can now jailbreak and, you know, all your patience has paid off. Now, I've been using Extra Recipe ever since it was released, and I can definitely say that it is more stable than Mock Portal once you actually get it to work. And again, as I said, I made two videos on this last week. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and check out both of those videos. And Luca also claims that this jailbreak is more stable than the Yalu 10.2 jailbreak for those of you who are jailbroken on iOS 10.2, which is pretty impressive. Now, since iOS 10.0.x support got added to this jailbreak, a couple people on Twitter have been asking me 
Does that mean that 10.2 support for the iPhone 7 is coming soon? And the answer to that is maybe, but probably not. Nobody has mentioned anything about a jailbreak coming for the iPhone 7 on 10.2, so I would not assume that anything is coming from that because again, to jailbreak the iPhone 7 on 10.2, that memory protection bypass does not work on 10.2 like it does on 10.1.1 and below. So it's gonna take a new one, which is not, probably not gonna happen. Now keep in mind, it is not impossible. It's definitely possible, but it's gonna take a new memory protection bypass which, you know, I'm not sure anybody's gonna burn that on 10.2, you know, an old firmware like that. So it's possible, but it's just not likely. So if you happen to be on an iPhone 7 running iOS 10.2, you are currently in the toughest position of all. You're gonna have to decide if you wanna stay on 10.2 or update to 10.3.1 before it stops being signed. And that's a tough spot to be in. I'd personally be super confused and I would not know what to do. At the very least right now, if you do anything, I would save your 10.3.1 SHSH2 blobs before anything else. That way, if you stay on 10.2, you'll still potentially be able to update update to 10.3.1 after it stops being signed if a jailbreak does come for 10.2. So speaking of 10.3.1, what is up with the jailbreak right now? As far as Pengu goes, nothing really. I mean, they've been active on social media. They've been very active over the past month, but they've been tweeting only about Mosec, not tweeting. They've been on Weibo posting about Mosec 2017 and the speakers and things like that. But once again, as I've said before, I would not start to get worried that they're not going to release anything until at least a week or two after the Mosec 2017 conference. If a week or two go by after the Mosec 20 2017 conference and Pengu has not released anything or said anything on Weibo or Twitter or anything like that, then I would definitely start to get worried and you know pretty much assume that they're not going to be releasing anything at all for 10.3.1. Now, as I've said before, just plan on a jailbreak not being released. And if it does get released, let that be a surprise to you. You're going to live your life better. And this just applies for everything in life. Just don't have these expectations. Don't have such high expectations. Let it be a surprise. You know, if, if jailbreak, if a jailbreak doesn't get released, you won't sweat it, you know, because you weren't anticipating it so much. But if a jailbreak does get released, you're going to be really excited. So I would just try to limit your expectations and let it be more of a surprise than an anticipation uh, for Pengu to release this. Because again, they never really came out and said that they're going to be releasing anything. I know that's been said so many times, but they've really never come out and said they're going to be releasing anything. They didn't even post anything on their Weibo or Twitter at all about the Janus conference. It's just come from another source that is affiliated with Pengu. Now going away from Pengu, remember that they are not the only ones potentially releasing a 10 10.3.1 jailbreak. The security researcher named Adam from Zimperium is actually going to be publicly releasing an exploit for 10.3.1 that works on all devices, including the iPhone 7, all 64-bit devices, including the iPhone 7. He's going to be releasing that in late August. Now, I've talked about this extensively in the past, over the past few episodes, but remember that this is not a full-fledged jailbreak. It's just an exploit, and somebody is going to have to put more into it, more exploits and bugs into it to form a full-fledged jailbreak. So when it does get released in late August, it's just going to be an exploit. It's not going to be a full-fledged jailbreak just yet. Now, with all that being said, I did talk to Adam in DMs a couple weeks back, and he did say that he could actually release the jailbreak. He just doesn't want to have to deal with the support. So he's looking for a security researcher to come on board and help him uh, you know, with this jailbreak, turn it into a jailbreak, and also be the support person. And of course, the option's always out there to give it to Pengu or Taiji or somebody like that. But again, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with that in late August. I know you guys are saying, oh man, that's so far away. But you know, that's just something, you know, we know for sure is going to be released. It's an exploit we know for sure is going to be released. The Pengu thing's not for sure. So at least this is something concrete that we know is for sure coming in late August. And I say for sure because he doesn't really have any reason to lie about this. I mean, he was credited in Apple's notes, security notes. He's legit. He works for a legit company. I don't see any reason to lie about this release. But anyways, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. I do these jailbreak update videos every week to keep you as informed as possible on the jailbreak scene. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.